deals on the table Just a couple years ago I couldn't pay for cable Growing up surrounded by cane like I was able Shit was unstable, now visionaries the label Plus Def Jam, know who I am I'm that motherfucker that do it just cause I can The last time we talked was eight months ago How has your life changed since then? You always be asking me these crazy ass questions. So for those of y'all in fucking Hard Knock Land who don't know, me and Nick are like really good friends. I love how you just ask me the most intellectual <laughs> shit on camera and fuck me up. Um, I think my life has changed dramatically in, a, in like a really positive way. Just because like every day, you know, I wake up and I do what I love just like I was eight months ago, only now, you know, we're closer to the album, which is gonna tr change my life again. and. Um, you know, closer to these tours that are coming out. And it's just, it's it's all changed for the better, for sure, just to keep it short and simple. Mm -hmm. But it hasn't, like, the, the shit that's really gonna change it hasn't necessarily happened yet. It's like in the process of happening and like I'm getting everything ready and together for the album to drop. Cause that's when everything is different, forever. Mm -hmm. Like, forever and ever. Yeah. Last time we talked, obviously you had signed to Def Jam, no ID, mm -hmm. and I think, Myself and a lot of people expected that the album probably would have a, a big no ID mm -hmm. hand in it, but yeah, I've yeah. actually had the pleasure of listening to the album, yeah. and that turned out to not be the case. Mm -hmm. Tell yeah. us how, how that process came about, the, the process of making the album. When we sat down, I mean, we kind of all were like thinking, especially me, just like that me and no ID were like just almost damn near every track, but it didn't happen that way in a positive light. You know, because he's also like an executive. He's now, now he's a uh, executive vice president of Def Jam, so congratulations. So he's like not only taking care of the uh, artistic side of things as a producer and, and, and a legend, but uh, now he's kind of like stepping in the building, like coming to shit, you know what I mean? So um, it's cool just that he's doing that. And I was kind of, it's, it's really weird. I remember having conversations with him just about music and about beats and about where hip hop was and where it is and like what's going on and all these different things. And I say that, you know, he is an executive producer, totally 100% of, of the album. But sometimes people could take that and think like, oh, that means he's going to do every beat. Like that's not the case. Um, I think what I got from him mentally and, and as far as like, even like a mentorship, you know what I mean? It's so funny because everybody cold and like everybody's always like, no, I do my mentor. But like this dude is like everybody's mentor. It's crazy. So um, he had a, a humongous impact on the album by stepping away from it and always being there if I needed him and things like that. But I kind of went away and just did my thing and just showed up one day and was like, here you go, you know? He had heard the album already because, you know, obviously I give him all the stuff, but he hadn't heard it in order. He hadn't heard all the little special things I added to it and stuff. And like when it was, he sat there and he just listened to every little like detail. And um, he was taking notes on it. And like Dion, I mean, excuse me, no ID is like a hard ass. Like when it comes to music, like, you know, I think you could do this better or the raps could be this or da da da, da, da like all this shit. So I was kind of like, oh man, like just watching him and he was listening to the whole thing. And then at the end of it, he was like, it's a pretty fucking good album, man. Like, you know, and I was like, damn, it's almost like a, remember we were joking in the studio how No ID's like the dad at the baseball game? Were you there? Oh man, so it's like, you hope like your dad's gonna come see you, like hit the home run and you're looking in the stands before you take the last hit and he's, you don't see him. And then you like, you knock it out of the park and everybody's like, yeah. And you're like, all right, but my dad didn't get to see it. And then you look over and your dad's giving you the slow clap. <laughs> like, like, that's what it was like, that I kind of did, essentially did this whole album by myself, you know, at the studio in my room right here. And, um, you know, he listened to it and he was just like, great job. He was like, it's crazy. And I'm not trying to overdo it or anything, but he was like, you know, it might be like a new classic, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let's let, the, let's let the public decide. But he loved it. So essentially, uh, how much... Uh, that he had to had to do with the album was very extensive and very intimate as far as just the conversations we had. And I think conversations more than beats could be the biggest thing that make an album really amazing. If you can open my mind to concepts and different ideas rather than, yo, let me get a No ID beat, let me get that cosign, like that, that's not what it's about, you know what I mean? And I know me and No ID are very synonymous now just because him signing me and, and all this, but 
it was very, I, I really honestly, I did it by myself. I made the album that I wanted to make and it just so happened that it was good enough that he thought it was good enough, you know? Who handled the production for most of the album? Uh, most of the album was me and Six, which is weird to say that. That's weird as shit, but um, Six, my homie, who's been there from the beginning since the basement, uh, he, did, he, he did four records on the whole album and he has his hand in eight of the records. Um, not including the deluxe. I don't know what, what's going to be on the deluxe or anything like that, but so far, that's how many records that he's done. I did, uh, I did four, but I only count that I did three. I mean, you know, obviously I'm w working with others and things like that, but um, I did, yeah. And, uh, but one of them I gave to, to No ID because he hit me and was like, yo, he was like, this is so crazy. And I was like, you want this right? He was like, yeah. So he's been working on that. He said, it's, it sounds amazing. So I'm waiting, I'm waiting to hear that, but yeah. Uh, I know one thing that we've talked about a few times is uh, not having any big rap features on the album. Yeah. Uh, t tell me a little bit about why you wanted to go that route. Uh, that was crazy. I remember when I said that on Twitter and everybody was like, it was mixed reactions. It was like, yeah, Illmatic, that shit. Like, you know what I mean? And others were like, oh, you know, like, it's not going to be that good because you, you don't have other rappers on your shit. And I feel like we live in a day and age where... You put every album you get has like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten features on it, legitimately, from singers to rappers, and it's like almost oversaturated. I feel like back in the day, I was talking to um, Cannon, you know, the producer, and he was like, "Man, because I wanted a lot of people on it, man. I wanted, you know, people like Kendrick who I'd yet to meet, you know what I mean? But I had seen him like, oh man, he would kill this, or or Cole, or you know, all these just different people that I was like, man, they kill this, they kill this, and I was talking to Cannon." And this was very early in the, in the stages. And he was like, man, fuck everybody. Like, this is your album, bro. He's like, back in the day, man, when people would do features, it was amazing. It was like, a, oh, my God. Like, when, when uh, you know, Nas was on Only Built for Cuban Links. Like, what? Like, that's one of the first times I had, like, heard Nas when I listened to that album um, years ago. And I'm just like, oh, man, this is crazy to be able to hear this. And it's like two genres almost subgenres within it just color but now it's like that's just so normal you know what i mean he's on this record and this and that and so i was like i just don't want to do that i just don't want to do what everybody else does you know what i mean i don't need nobody to get on my shit to make my to make me better or more relevant or anything like that and not to sound arrogant but it's like if i'm gonna do it and i'm gonna impress you i'm gonna impress you because of who i am not because of who my friends are you know what i mean and not who i can get on the record okay. and um but on top of that and mind you there's some people i really really wanted on the album and when I had that conversation with Cannon, it, it changed my mind in a very positive way. Just like I could have conversations with no ID and he'll change my mind about things and it can dramatic, dramatically change the, the outcome of the album. So overall, I kind of sat back and I realized that it's funny because you were saying like I'm a conceptual guy and I never really saw myself as that. But this album is extremely 100% conceptual. There's, there's like mini concepts in the big concepts and side concepts and like... It's like a fucking, it's like Memento. I don't know if y'all seen that movie where it's like insane and you have no idea what's going on. And, um, you know, through all that and realizing where the writing was going and the storytelling, I realized can't nobody tell my story the way I can tell it. And I don't want somebody else on my shit telling their story because this is my show, this is my time, this is my introduction. I heard that you might do a little freestyle for us. I do, actually, which is tight. And we will do that right now. <laughs> Is this awkward? Am I awkwardly just gonna turn around? Oh yeah, this is my shit. We can just fast forward all this stuff. All right, this is something fun, something slight. I hope I don't fuck this up, cause then it can't be one take. All right, check it, check it, check it, check it. Yeah, yeah, uh, now. Shorty, she love it, the second I rub it, there's nothing above it, less we talking music, that's the only time I covet. Latina honey took me to the casa, I ain't lying, I killed the pussy like Mufasa, never imposter, she like to blunt up like a roster. Put on her clothes, now we headed out to dinner, dinner, eating shrimp and lobster. Unless I'm mobbing with the rap pack, then we scoffing pasta. I prophesize the future like I'm Nostra, diamonds, never cocky, I'm honest, spitting the bombers at the party, swimming in a sea of women while they spin a bonics. Murder the game at light speed like Sega Sonic, look white but spit black, cause me mixed like a gin and tonic. Shorty, she love it thuggish. Of course, that's hella rugged. And now you know we blowing up like Middle Eastern luggage. Yeah, we live life and do it proper. From MD to NYC, whipping the Phantom to the Opera. <laughs> Rap Pack, Young Sinatra, Albus finna come out, Hard Knock TV, Nick Huff, Def Jam, Visionary, World Tour coming soon, baby. Peace.